While today the International Space Station has more than a dozen habitable modules, one in particular has been the heart of the entire complex for two decades. This module has its origins in the days of the Soviet Union and was an essential element that had to be launched before the first crews could regularly inhabit the outpost. Today, we're going to learn about the Russian Zvezda module. But first, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for even more human spaceflight content. Zvezda, which means star in Russian, was the first fully Russian contribution to the International Space Station. It launched atop a proton rocket on July 12, 2000 from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan and docked with the VIN-2 module ISS two weeks later. The module itself is 4.35 meters wide and 13.1 meters long. It has two solar panels that stretch out a total of 29.7 meters. Overall, Zvezda has a mass of 20,300 kilograms and a pressurized volume of about 90 cubic meters. Zvezda comprises several sections. In the front is a spherical transfer compartment with three docking ports, one forward, one nadir earth facing, and one zenith space facing. The main body is called the work compartment and includes the main pressurized living area. At the aft is a small cylindrical transfer chamber that leads to an aft docking port. Finally, there's an assembly compartment that wraps around the aft transfer compartment and holds external equipment such as thrusters and propellant tanks and antennas. Overall, the module has 16 thrusters for attitude control and two large thrusters at its rear for propulsion and orbit raising maneuvers. After achieving orbit and the module's antennas and solar panels extended, Zvezda made its way to the two-module ISS. It docked with the aft end of the Zarya module on July 26, 2000, where it remains to this day. Since its arrival at the ISS, Zvezda has seen two modules attached to it. On the nadir earth-facing port is the pierced docking compartment, which arrived in September 2001. And on the zenith space-facing port is the similarly designed Poisk module, which arrived in November 2009. Additionally, the aft port has seen various cargo and crewed spacecraft dock throughout its two-decade history, including the now-retired European Space Agency Automated Transfer Vehicle. At some point in the next several years, the Piers module is expected to be detached and replaced by the yet-to-be-launched NACA module, which is itself based on the Zarya module. According to NASA, the module provided early living quarters for the first expeditions to the ISS. It also provided the main life support systems, electrical power distribution and data processing systems, attitude control, and propulsion. Today, many of those systems have been augmented by other areas of the outpost. Zvezda still remains the functional center of the ISS, however, and is typically the assembly area for crew during emergencies. Inside the habitable work area are two sleeping quarters, a NASA-provided treadmill, and a bicycle for exercise, a toilet, and a galley. There is also a control unit called Toru, which is used to manually dock Soyuz and Progress spacecraft from inside the ISS, should it be necessary. Throughout the module, there are a total of 14 windows, including a single 41cm diameter earth-facing window in the main work area for observation and photography. While not typically talked about, with all of the computers, fans, and other equipment inside the ISS, there is a lot of noise generated. It's similar to that of a passenger aircraft cabin. However, Zvezda has been considered one of the noisier places on the outpost, and early ISS crew members often wore earplugs to protect their hearing during the workday. Zvezda was first entered by the crew of Spatial Atlantis's STS-106 mission in September of 2000. Their job was to finalize connections between that module and the rest of the ISS via a spacewalk and continue preparing the outpost for its first long-duration crew later that year. Built by RKK Energia at the Krutyshev State Research and Production Space Center in Moscow, Zvezda, also known as DOS-8, can trace its history to the Soviet Union's Salyut space stations in the 1970s and 1980s, including history's first orbiting outpost, Salyut-1. In fact, DOS-8 was originally planned to be the backup to the Mir space station service module and eventually the core for the then-planned Mir-2 space station. The frame for Zvezda was completed in 1985, and major internal equipment was installed in 1986. However, when the Soviet Union collapsed and the Cold War ended in the early 1990s, the United States and the newly formed Russian Federation agreed to combine their respective Freedom Station and Mir-2 designs to form the International Space Station. Zvezda's launch was delayed by nearly two years because of financial difficulties and technical issues. Ultimately, the module was supposed to fly some six months after the joining of the Zarya and Unity modules in orbit in December of 1998. These delays, which started as early as 1996, prompted NASA to build an interim control module that could replace Zvezda in case of a further delays or even a launch failure. However, the launch of Zvezda was successful and the backup control module was never flown. 
Overall, this Vesda module cost roughly $320 million to build and fly. According to NASA, to help pay for the launch, the Russian space agency looked for funding from a variety of unexpected sources, such as a Pizza Hut advertisement on the side of the Proton rocket. Regardless of the rough road to get this module into orbit, its arrival was critical to the long-term operation of the ISS, as well as the success of US, Russian, and international collaboration on the project. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this Vesda module. It amazes me how each era of space exploration interconnects with the next, and makes me wonder what influences our current era will have on the next generation of space exploration. Which of today's unused hardware will become tomorrow's star? If you haven't already, please like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. You can also head over to orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content, including a monthly newsletter called The Space Capsule. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, at Astra.